Well, in a landmark policy initiative, India announced a near $7 billion package with incentive schemes to attract global and local electronics and telecom equipment manufacturers. To discuss more about the policy directive, I'm joined by none other than the Honorable Law and Justice, Communications, Electronics and Information Technology Minister of India, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So first up, my question to you is, under the production link scheme of this incentive package, where the government is offering 4 to 6 percent rebate on incremental production, is India trying to replicate the success it has had in mobile phone manufacturing in the overall consumer electronics space as well? Obviously, you must understand the background of India. Under the leadership of the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, India has unleashed some very transformative programs. Digital India, Make in India, Startup India, all have acquired great resonance. Digital India in particular, with 1.21 billion mobile phone, 1.26 billion Aadhaar digital identity to supplement the physical identity, and close to 370 Jandhan bank account the poor, we started sending all the welfare entitlement to the bank account the poor and we sent close to 170 billion US dollars and we saved close to almost 30 to 40 billion dollars which is to be pocketed by middlemen and fictitious claimants. In electronics in particular, just to tell you that when we had come to power, the total electronic production in India was 29 billion US dollars in 2014. Now it has reached close to 70 billion US dollar plus. And in mobile in particular, from two mobile factory in 2014, India is now home to 260 plus mobile phone and component manufacturing units in the country. Therefore, from consumer electronics to overall electronics to mobile electronics, some of the finest brands are there in India. Now we thought we need to scale it up further. And therefore, this mega incentive which you just talked about, we have announced. And it has three components. One is the production link incentive. That is the major component um, of almost nearly $5 billion plus. And then you have the uh, component manufacturing scheme. And then you have the cluster manufacturing scheme. That's how it works out. Right. So let's talk about the second scheme as well, sir, where you're offering financial incentive of 25% on capital expenditure for electronics and semiconductors. Could you share more details on how the scheme will be implemented in conjunction with reforms on the land and labor side? Because the government has been quite proactive, I believe, in this regard in states such as Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, as well as Madhya Pradesh. Uh, just to tell you very briefly how India's ecosystem is developing. I'm happy to share with you that in the last five and a half years, close to 97 mobile and component factories have emerged only in Noida and Greater Noida, in Uttar Pradesh, but adjoining Delhi, apart from South India, Andhra Pradesh to uh, Telangana to Tamil Nadu. Therefore, this growth is now developing to Karnataka. Now, the, all the state governments are very excited about it. We are having Invest India dialogue with all the state governments, through our secretaries, to our other officers. And everyone is quite positive because the biggest asset of electronic manufacturing is it is non-polluting. In fact, I can also share with you that we have also come with a package for medical electronics. Post-COVID, healthcare is going to become very, very crucial. Therefore, MRI machine, X-ray machine, pathological lab machines, testing machines, all are electronics ultimately. Therefore, we have also given a scheme for that. I think all this electronic manufacturing ecosystem, from mobile to consumer to strategic electronics to your medical electronics, all are going to work in conjunction. And India is properly helping in that. Now, you talked about component. Component is important. Obviously, why not? Semiconductor mobile component, other components, all we are going to incentivize under this scheme. And the third I must elaborate, the cluster scheme. Big companies come with their all ancillaries. 
and therefore 200 acre plus in the main land of India is the cluster scheme we have envisaged and 100 acres in the northeast of India. Therefore, big, big companies can also come with their clusters of ancillaries. Therefore, we have finalized this scheme in conjunction and dialogue with all the stakeholders. That's how we have come about with this scheme. Sure, there's a view in the market uh, that suggests that that cluster scheme is particularly targeted uh, towards Apple and its component suppliers. I'm given to understand that iPhone's assembly partner, Pegatron, is planning to set up a plant uh, to avail the benefits of these new schemes. Is there some truth to that? You know, this whole scheme is industry specific to make India a big hub of electronic manufacturing. But I must clarify to the global audience which will be listening to your eminent channel. When we talk of make in India, it does not mean an India in isolation. It means an India which is globally becoming competitive as a partner of the global economy. India's asset in service of the global assets. That's how we see it. India has extraordinary human resource. You all know it. India's startup movement has become the second in the world. You know it. Therefore, the IT power, the soft power, the startup power, the human resource, all are available in abundance for the manufacturer to tap on. Therefore, it will not be prudent for me as a minister to mention any specific movement. Any company which seeks to move to India is welcome. We shall be facilitating and also giving all the cooperation. That's all I can tell you. Okay, fair enough. But I do want to pick up on your point, sir, about making India the global manufacturing hub under Prime Minister Modi's Make in India program. What kind of cost advantage does this package offer to global manufacturers vis-a-vis -vis China and Vietnam in Asia? If you could elaborate more on that. First of all, you must understand this huge package is there. India's talent pool is there. India has emerged as a country of great stability, leadership global positioning post-COVID in particular and overall India's ecosystem, India's huge market. After all, 1.21 billion is not a small number as far as mobile phones are concerned and the way India's digital initiative has grown. After all, many of the global brands are already in India making large number of mobile phones. Therefore, they have seen the worth of India. Therefore, Plus, ease of doing business, we have jumped 63 points. India's taxation is 15% as far as these company operations are concerned. Therefore, I can tell you that we have, after studying the global initiative, we have sought to give the best advantage. And plus, I again assert that India's talent pool is enormous. Why not? Therefore, make in India is not against any country. It is only India positive. And this we are quite sure, based upon our, if, what I told in my presser, a modest achievement in the last five years, which I just outlined in the very beginning of my interaction with you, as to how we have achieved in the field of electronic manufacturing. Now we wish to scale it up further. So I have uh, last few questions uh, to ask you. One, of course, is in your capacity as telecom minister, the world is graduating uh, towards 5G technology, the next generation of 5G networks. What is the roadmap for 5G in India? Well, we have already laid down the roadmap, but COVID interrupted. It interrupted not only India, it interrupted the world, including Singapore, including China, including America, including Europe. So that's the call we have to take. 5G is an emerging technology. It's a good technology, fast technology. Therefore, we had uh, given a whole uh, larger framework of developing the models in the initial stage. Many of the Indian IITs were working. Others, we have given permission to experiment. So let a proper India-suited model 5G develop. India is a huge market for 5G also. We have also to address its security concerns also because it is very fast, you know it very well. Therefore, that aspect also we have to take. take. But we are very keen to pursue 5G. It is evolving. We have to learn from experiences as the world also is 
uh, experiencing its evolution. Is there a tentative timeline, sir, that you have in mind to roll out the network? Uh, and I think one more question that uh, analysts had regarding India's 5G plans is uh, the availability of spectrum. What band of spectrum would you be looking to relieve for the 5G network? A spectrum will not be a problem. Let me assure the global investors. A spectrum will not be a problem. India has abundance of spectrum. Yes, we go in a fair and transparent manner. The spectrum being a natural resource is to be auctioned in a proper public auction. Any player can take it. So all that call we will take. You trust us. The moment post-COVID things settle, we are available for all that. But once this testing start of 5G, we shall certainly be releasing certain spectrum for the test purposes. That we will do. Uh, so you appreciate me asking this question primarily because it is of uh, global importance right now. Given what's happening with Huawei, which is one of the leading tech players uh, in the world, the kind of scrutiny that it's facing in the United States on security issues, Huawei has presence in India on the hardware side. It's being caught between uh, the US and China trade and tech tensions as well. What can you share with us as far as your current thinking stands on Huawei's presence in India and its role in the 5G network rollout plan? Well, as far as the testing part is concerned, we have clearly stated that we will not be stopping anyone. That is the test part is concerned. But the larger issue of who will be allowed or who will not be allowed is a question of policy and also our auction purposes. A call will have to be taken by India consistent with our security perspective also. That's all I have to tell. We have seen some big internet giants uh, come out of Asia. There have been some very prominent internet names that have come out of China in the likes of Alibaba and Tencent. You have seen big tech companies uh, come out of the US such as Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. The recent interest that Reliance Geo has evinced from foreign investors, strategic and financial, has made headlines world over. Do you think that the next internet champion will come out of India? In fact, I will not take the name of any particular company, but that's our ambition. Today, India, India has close to uh, 7 million plus, uh, sorry, 70 million, 700 million plus internet penetration. Today, our mobile phone internet covers nearly 95% of India. We are reinforcing our uh, connectivity of all the cluster of villages, Gram Panchayat, by optical fiber, which we call Bharat Net. Very soon, we are going to get the cabinet approval of Vani, whereby on a simple kiosk, through a proper uh, design architecture, even a grocery shop owner can sell a, a small SIM card type of provisioning for uh, broadband. We have launched the broadband mission in India. Uh, most important is that this uh, about uh, 100,000 digital villages which we are going to launch. Therefore, India's digital ecosystem has become very, very strong. I want to tell you. Our data protection law is also very much under scrutiny by the parliamentary committee. And we have taken a stand on net neutrality also very clearly when I told the parliament that right of access of Indians to internet is not negotiable. Therefore, we have been very, very clear about the inclusive nature of internet, including right of access, leading most important to digital inclusion. When that kind of ecosystem we have created with this huge backing India being the biggest market for Facebook, for WhatsApp, for Twitter, for other internet platform, Google. Surely there is also a passion of Indian software and uh, startups to come on the top, and we, including our corporate uh, companies who are uh, ultimately doing business in this field. So this is how FDI is completely free, you know it very well. Therefore, I foresee a very positive and promising future as far as uh, hope of India's internet uh, companies becoming big is concerned. That's how I see it. Sure. So the only flip side and concern there might be about 
you know, with so many American companies and Chinese firms uh, looking at India being the next big attractive opportunity to garner the next billion users, that regulatory framework may need to be reassessed, revisited to ensure that the control of these companies stays within India and that the Indian government has full control over the sector. What are your thoughts there? We don't believe in unnecessary control. I want to make it very clear. But yes, you have a very valid point that the registered office of the company needs to be in India. The grievance officer of the company must be settled in India. These are very important so that if people of India is a democracy governed by rule of law, therefore if there is anyone has a question to ask, anyone has a complaint to make, he must be given suitable address by the system. And many of these concerns which you flagged, we are addressing in our data protection law. I thought I need to convey you that.